Forever Ambergris will have you think twice about your choice of perfume. Directed by Gary Fletter, written by Scott Rosenberg, and shot by Rick Boda. Based on a story from Tales from the Crypt number 44, drawn by Jack Davis. The Crypt travels the globe to bring us one sickly climax. Captain Matt Stark introduces himself. As he waits for Eileen to finish getting ready to go out, he tells us he loves her so much he murdered her husband to be with her. He also can't shake this weird feeling he has about whale vomit. Stark begins the story of his first mate, Ben. For months, Ben worked with Stark, trying to convince him to meet his wife, Eileen. At last, the captain gives in and meets the couple for dinner. He is immediately struck by Eileen's beauty. In mid-flight, young combat photographer Ike receives feedback from photography veteran Dalton. Ike has been a fan of Dalton since childhood and is in disbelief over serving next to his idol. Dalton fears he's lost his touch, but Ike won't let him say such things. The conversation switches to Ike's wife, Bobby. Hey, what's that smell? It's sweet balsam. It's good for incense. I got good incense in Iraq. I bring some back every assignment for my girl. Who's that, Bobby? Yeah, you really gotta meet her sometime, Dalton. Hey, maybe this trip you can come by for dinner some night. Stateside, Dalton gets chewed out for the waning quality of his work. It's nothing compared to up-and-coming Ike's photography. Dalton proclaims he's going to Central America for a big job, and will come back with something extraordinary. His boss wants him to bring Ike along. He visits Ike at home, where Bobby answers the door. Eileen isn't at all interested in Ben. She keeps staring at Stark, sensuously. Ben leaves the two alone to get drinks. Captain Stark hasn't seen a woman in months. He's overcome with desire and kisses Eileen. She seems to enjoy it until she pulls back. The two play it cool as Ben comes back into the room. Days pass when Captain Stark finally has a chance for a private conversation with Eileen. She doesn't really love Ben and only married him for security. Eileen wants to be with Stark, but also wants Ben's money. Stark swears that he will have her. With Ike out of the room, Dalton gets to know Bobby. She likes Ike a lot more than Eileen likes Ben, and fell in love with his photographic talents. Dalton obsesses over Bobby. The two have more one-on-one -on -one time that night. Dalton and Ike fly out. As Ike sleeps, Dalton learns from an old comrade of a village ravaged by biological warfare. The place is a death trap. Meanwhile, Captain Stark and Ben sail off. Ben says his goodbyes to Eileen in front of the jealous Matt Stark. That night on the ship, looking out at the ocean, Captain Stark decides Ben will not return home from the voyage. Ben and Captain Matt enjoy the time off at port in Osaka. Stark gets away from Ben for a little while, and learns of a dangerous island. Back on the ship, Ben is excited to get home to Eileen, but not before a personal errand for Stark. The captain claims he promised to drop off a barrel of fuel for a friend on an island. Days later, Ben is loading up that barrel for his captain, ready to deliver it to the shore. Unbeknownst to Ben, the island is a dumping ground for the infected. Bubonic plague runs rampant there. Dalton isn't getting along with the mercenaries he and Ike have been tasked to follow. Dalton plans to separate from the group and get photos of the afflicted village. Ike offers to switch places, but Dalton lets his anger out. You play that all shucks thing just like a fucking pro. The truth is you're a jackal. Just trying to deprive me of one last walk in the sun. No, man, that ain't it. This is my last chance to get back to where I was at the start of this fucking pig circus, and you're gonna take it away from me? No way. Hey, Dalton, come on, man. You said it yourself about, about being too jaded, and this is like an opportunity. We'd share the shots. <laughs> share the shots. Share the fucking shots! That manipulative has-been changes his mind and lets Ike go in his place. The two eventually reunite. Ike writes a postcard to Bobby, detailing the unreal sights he's seen. I'm just writing Bobby a postcard now, tell him about it. But you gotta see it, Dalton. I mean, even you can get a good shot. I mean, it was amazing. Ike and Dalton get some sleep. 
After a couple days, the symptoms arrive. Ben caught the plague. The crew avoids him. Meanwhile, a whale follows the ship. The captain and his crew pass the time feeding the mighty beast their food scraps. Ah! 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 What the fuck's the matter? Ah! Ben! My Ben! Oh, ben. Oh, what's wrong? I don't know! Oh, oh. Help me! Ike's symptoms arrive much quicker. He is in bad shape. Dalton has a heart-to-heart -heart with his ailing colleague. He's starting to look like the house salad, dressing on the side. Oh, Valera. You got it, brother. Those peasants weren't killed by no artillery round. <laughs> You're deep in the herd locker now. Ugh, Ike's not gonna make it. The mercenaries exchange stories outside when Ike makes a shocking appearance. A freaked out Dalton doesn't let the contagious danger get far. The crew panics. Ben has left his cabin. Reduced to a blackened, rotting mess, he stumbles across the ship. Walking into a rail, Ben is cut in half, falling overboard. The next day, Matt Stark has forgotten the whole incident. His mind is on Eileen. The whale still trails behind. To the surprise and joy of the captain, this giant mammal throws up a mass of treasured ambergris. Stark orders his crew to collect the treasure for him. Once at home, Stark sells the ambergris to a perfume maker for a fortune. A boatload of the scent is given to the captain, which he gifts to his beloved Eileen. This brings us back to the beginning. Stark couldn't be happier with his life, until he realizes the whale must have thrown up because it ate Ben. Ben, who was infected with the Black Death. He scrambles to stop Eileen from using the tainted perfume. It's too late, but don't worry, she loves the divine scent. After taking credit for Ike's photos, Dalton brings flowers to Bobby. She is in disbelief over her husband's postcard, his final words to her. Dalton assures Bobby that Ike did not suffer, but a letter from one of the mercenaries came with Ike's postcard. Saying how you sent him to that village knowing he'd get sick, how Isaac took the pictures you didn't, how after he was sick, you shot him dead. It was from a Dominic Salucci. I didn't believe it. I still don't. Dalton has Bobby, but in a scene of sex and gore that I don't think I can show on YouTube, Bobby reveals Ike sent her balsam from the infected village, and the two of them just smoked it. Both are about to die horrible deaths. Just like his career, Dalton's body is falling apart. This episode is a nasty delight. I don't typically think of The Who's Roger Daltrey as an actor, so I was surprised to see how long his filmography was when looking it up. His voice was perfect for the grizzled Dalton, sour towards his career, and ready to resort to the dirtiest of tricks to stay relevant. Steve Buscemi is one of my favorite actors, and the innocence of Ike shows his versatility next to the likes of Mr. Pink in Reservoir Dogs the year before. Honestly, what more can I say about Steve Buscemi? Forever Ambergris is one of the more faithful adaptations we've watched in a while. The basic structure of a jealous man causing the death of the husband of the woman he wants remains intact. The biggest differences lie within the occupation of our two men and the wife in question. Combat photographers definitely make for a more unique story than nondescript sailors. Eileen clearly wanted Captain Stark, but Bobby actually loved her husband, meaning Dalton acted on his own volition. And the final reveal isn't just a gross shock, but a twist of sweet smelling revenge. You both die. Uh, sure, we all have to make sacrifices. Uh. 